everybody. Uh, welcome again. Here we have uh, another show for you, the David Lawler Podcast. Thank you to anybody who listens, if anybody listens, if they care to listen, if they're into listening. Um, I was uh, looking at a video, uh, or a series of videos, I should say. Um, my daughter is into... Uh, cat videos, of course, and that was pretty much the principal or primary reason the internet was developed. It was initially intended to exchange government information on a, um, a, a covert level. Uh, you know, it was called the ARPANET. I believe it was invented by Al Gore and the ghost of uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. But it wound up becoming um, a uh, the 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 ultimate forum for posting cat pictures, cat memes, and cat videos. These uh, videos are mainly showing cats <laughs> doing embarrassing things. Oh, cats! They're so much like us, just like celebrities. Cats are just like celebrities. They're so like us. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, and what we like to see, you know, when we see cat videos. <laughs> This is actually going to be a topic for discussion. So pretty much fast forward in case I talk about anything else. Whatever should be on my mind. But today we're talking about cats, people. And cat people. There was a movie with, uh, I forget her name, Simone somebody or, you know. Simone Simon? No. Is that a porn star? I don't know. But anyway, there was a movie called Cat People a long time ago. And then Paul Schrader remade it into the very sick cat people from 1982 starring Nastasia Kinski and Malcolm McDowell. Um, okay. Uh, where was I? I'm totally on a tangent here. Cat video, right. <clears throat> you know, one of my favorites that we used to look at was I can has cheeseburger. I can has cheeseburger because people think that cats, if they were to speak, they would sound like this. I can has cheeseburger. I do the podcast. Yes. I'm stealing all your warmth and all that stuff. I got in fridges, took cheeseburgers. I Maybe somebody had a cat that really liked cheeseburgers. My cats really don't care about cheeseburgers. My cats care about, what do they like? My cats, okay, I, I, I have this uh, sort of idea about my cooking. I, I, do, I do most of the cooking for the house. Um, there's two things that I make that they, that they would eat, and I consider that it's got to be perfection then. If I can make something that my family will enjoy and I and and my cats will also enjoy, then it's good. It is universal. It's humans and cats. Dogs eat anything. Dogs eat God. I saw a dog eat his own crap once and I was like, ooh, I can't deal with that. I can't have that. I can't have that in my life. I don't need that shit in my life. Uh, so I make I make a salmon. I make a poached salmon, if you will. And they go nuts. They get they're, they're like dogs that way. We have three cats, all right. Uh, we have the little one Sushi that we found last year. We rescued her. She was in an SUV engine. We brought cops. The cops tried to get her out. I tried to get her out. We finally my next door neighbor traps her, so I took her in. I call her. We call her Sushi because uh, Brahman was going out to get sushi, the food, the raw fish, if you will. Uh, uh, when when this all transpired. So that's her name. It's sort of part of her thing. It's kind of like we have this other cat named Little, who's actually a very big cat. Uh, he's an ironic name. It's an ironic name, you see, because he's so big. Uh, I, I, he was rescued also, along with his sibling. They were stuck in a grate in the city when I was at my job during the New York City Marathon in 2010. And I was thinking Marathon would be a great name for that cat, but, you know. Uh, it didn't work out that way. And then there's Siren. Siren's my old girl. She is going to be 17. She's still in pretty good health. She's got a little bit of pain in her leg. She doesn't run around as much. And she's pretty much enjoying her position as the alpha female of the family, of the house. And all the cats bow down to her and worship her when they're not fighting with her. Um, so they like my salmon. Yes, they go nuts. Sometimes I give them a little bit. You don't want to give a cat too much human food because... They can have issues with their stomach, I guess. They're, maybe they're not used to it. I remember one time, I don't know why, but I gave Little some Oscar Mayer ham. And he proceeded to have diarrhea. Diarrhea and vomit. And diarrhea is not pleasant for cats. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience for the rest of us. 
as I'm sure many people are, I love diarrhea myself. Uh, but with cats, it's really bad because they don't quite know what's going on with all of their plumbing and they don't know whether or not they should get into the, into the litter box. So sometimes you're going to see diarrhea all over the place. It's just, that's just fantastic. Uh, and so the other thing is uh, Thanksgiving turkey. You know, I'm cleaning up. I'm putting leftovers away. I did that last night after I recorded. And uh, Sushi is a very small cat. She's over a year old. She hasn't really grown much, and I'm trying to get her to eat as much as possible. It's it's kind of an uphill battle with her uh, because I she when we rescued her, she was obviously malnourished. You know, I had to check her out for all kinds of things, make sure she didn't have distemper or rabies or anything like that. So she's a slow grower right now. She's very much like a runt, but she has these enormously tall legs. I mean, like her legs are taller than any other cat in the house, even though those cats are bigger than her. She's still this tiny little thing with these big eyes. I love her. I love her. You can see pictures if you go to like the Blissville uh, or or the other some of the other pages, you know, where we say happy happy Thanksgiving. I took a picture, uh, a couple of staged photos. They were staged, they're not real, but the big big kitchen knife coming toward her, and she's just staring at it. It's a wonderful picture. Uh, anyway, I it, sushi really loves the Thanksgiving leftovers, and she helps me clean up. You know, some of the some of the little pieces that fall off that you don't you can't put away in, into the plastic or the packaging or the Tupperware or something like that. Uh, so she helps me clean up a little bit. Little does too. Siren, so not big fan, I guess. Um, you know, cats. What we've done to cats is unforgivable. We've taken something that is wild, that should be feral, uh, that should capture birds and mice and do things like that. And they, and now they're stuck in your home. They're looking out a window, and they're eating bugs. You know, I just don't understand the logic when you see, like, say, you see, uh, what, a, a silverfish, I think they're called, right? You see, like, a silverfish or a spider or even a roach. And then the cat is, like, you know, playing with it, playing with it. They love to play with their food. And then they freaking eat it. I mean, it's just like, oh, you know what? I got a little room for you. So I think I'll scoop you up. A little shaking, a little tenderizing. Down you go. Um... So the cats, you know, they, they all have their own distinctive personalities. That's a great thing about them. A lot of people keep cats. Uh, uh, my friends Andrew and Noah have, they're, 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 they're amazing, wonderful animal lovers because they have scores of cats and dogs running around everywhere. And I love animals too. Unfortunately, I don't really have the space for a dog, and I don't think people would tolerate it in this building. Um, you know, I always thought because my, my wife loves beagles. I love golden retrievers. I love basset hounds. You know, if I could get something along those lines in the future, that would be really nice. But we're not talking about dogs. Um, my topic, okay, now this comes up because of the videos. Uh, Regan shows me these videos of cats saying no. And, you know, I mean, it's just maybe the forming of the word as it comes to the little precious cat mouths. It sounds like they're saying no. And this is weird because they sound like a common when they're trying to verbalize when they're even sometimes when, when, you know, you'll have a cat that will, that will speak multisyllabically to you. Like little will come in when he's hungry or I call him, he knows his name. So he comes running. I say little and he comes running and he goes, rum, 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 rum. They kind of sound like a combination of old ladies and children. And the videos are hilarious because it's all these cats going, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. And it all revolves around one activity. And I'll give you a minute to guess based on the title of the episode, if you can guess what that what that activity is, that they're saying, no, 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 no. Their owners are giving them baths. This is, I you know, as much a public service as possible. I just need to tell you, it's not a good idea to give cats baths. Not the kind of baths where you're going to dump them into a bathtub full of water. This is not a good idea. And the reason for this is is very simple. Cats are extremely susceptible to pneumonia. Their lungs are not designed to withstand the kind of scarring that pneumonia can cause. Uh, the, the, their body temperature is such that their lungs are, are, are going to 
wind up expanding too much the skin and it's going to cause scarring which can can result in pneumonia and pneumonia is one of the number one perhaps the number two killers of cats leukemia being one of course uh one in four cats i I think according to the latest literature are susceptible to leukemia but you know a good portion i mean like leukemia is 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 not acquired in the way that pneumonia is pneumonia is acquired from exposure to certain elements they don't like it uh their bodies aren't good for it um but with the leukemia it's kind of in their blood already you you kind of get it you have to get them checked for leukemia the minute you there is a cat you know cats cats tend to drop from that so uh pneumonia can be caused by that and and a lot of this can uh, people feel that uh, what they have to do is if they have outdoor cats because sometimes cats can't get along indoors so they keep them outdoors and then they go rolling around in mud they wind up getting covered in all kinds of stuff and they might even pick up parasites things like ringworm and and you know uh other kinds of worms and and different diseases uh so they get dirty so the owner sort of makes this okay i'll just throw them in a bathtub and the problem is it's causes you know it takes them forever they don't like it either if you've ever uh, taken a cat out of a bathtub they run off they go and hide and they proceed to lick all the clean that you have forced onto them off their bodies because their idea of clean is coming from their tongues and you've seen a cat's tongue you know what they look like <laughs> uh scaly spiky things it's kind of unpleasant it's, it's it's better it's a drier tongue i'll give you uh that than say a dog's tongue a dog's tongue is uh is 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 wet and disgusting and really kind of flabby so uh these people that they they put the cats and the cats are saying no 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 and what they should be saying is stop it you're gonna kill me motherfucker you know that's fine uh, so it's no, 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 no. I hope, I hope I'm getting the right inflection in the voice. I pride myself on my ability to imitate cats, among other things. Uh, so, uh, if you really want to clean your cat, there, you have two choices to deal with them. Just deal with it. Okay. Uh, keep them indoors. That's a good one. That's a great rule of thumb. If they can't adapt to the indoors and tough titty, said the kitty, as 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 the saying goes, uh, deal with it. Um, if they are rela- good, solid, reliable outdoor cats, you want them out there perhaps hunting, looking for rabbits, whatever, chasing birds, country cat, whatever they do. And they come on in the house there. Uh, you got to have yourself a nice wipe kit. A wipe kit. W-I-P-E kit. Where you got like a nice little basin, perhaps with a little bit of water in it and a little bit of your pet shampoo. I'm sorry I'm talking in a southern accent. I just can't stop. Anyway, Rowdy comes in and he's all mangy. He's a mangy mutt. He's all covered up in dirt and all kinds of slime. You get on and go, Rowdy, get your cat ass in here. Anyway, you got a little basin, a little bit of uh, a little bit of water. Just a little bit. You want to use a washcloth little bit of water. Put a little bit of water on the washcloth. Maybe a little bit of that pet-approved soap. Do not use Garnier. Do not use uh, Botanics. Do not use... Uh, 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 what's that other stuff? What's the stuff that I use? Uh, not Prell. Not something with a P. It's that one with the the, the, the the models with the silky hair that's almost like flowing chocolate in slow motion. It's so beautiful. Anyway, I use a combination shampoo conditioner because I'm just too freaking lazy to sit there waiting for conditioner to work. I still have a good head of hair. So, you know, it gets to be a bit much. Anyway, you don't want to use any of that crap. Use use the heart's crap or whatever else. I, am, I, I don't know. The, you know, as American consumers go, the more money you spend is how much more you love, you know. So, you know, I went out like like Regan had Regan had a temperature um, a couple of weeks ago and we were out of cough syrup. So I spent twenty dollars on a bottle of this kind of uh, organic cough syrup made from honey and elderberry. Uh, she she liked it. She hates cough syrup as a rule. She hates Robitussin. She hates that 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 fake taste that that has so i got her this stuff it's like honey and elderberry 
something. She she liked it. She thought it was fine. It was palatable at least because it didn't taste like medicine, which is a good thing. And I don't believe in drugging my kids for the just just so that they'll shut up. So I'm not like you know the Nyquil, little N, little Y, big fucking Q, and put the kids to sleep or something like that. So you have that little washcloth. You got your little your little putty tat there. You wipe them down. Wipe them down. Get their paws. Make sure you get the paws. Paws are the most important. They're the ones that are tracking and everything. They're the ones that are getting, you know, the human hand is the filthiest thing on your body, really, because it, it, it money changes hands, lots of dirt on the money. Um, you're shaking hands all day. You're touching all kinds of objects that are probably loaded with germs. Keep your cell phones out of the toilet, too. That's another thing. Stop with the cell phones in the toilet. You are spreading all kinds of fecal matter everywhere. And we've got hepatem- hepatitis epidemics and E. coli epidemics. You want to worry about shit-borne diseases, they're called. And you can get a lot of shit-borne diseases from dogs and cats, too. Anyway, make sure the paws are nice and clean. You know, get some of the more surface dirt off. Give them a nice brushing when you're done. Make sure that their coat is dry. You don't want to have a wet coat. Okay, that's going to kill your cat. It's, uh, dogs, not so much. Dogs have a lower body temperature. They don't have to worry about that as much. They tend to get wet. And, you know, people give people give their dogs baths. Dogs like baths. But cats, even though they're kind of like water creatures in a way, that you, you will see cats sweeping up trout and rainbow fish out of, out of ponds and lakes, and they'll just scoop it up with their hands. They're so quick. But that's the way they are. There are water cats, you know, and then there are ones that aren't. They have heightened acuities, uh, reflexes, and heightened acuities in their eyes so that they're able to uh, see water. If you've ever wondered why your cat uh, is trying to figure out if there's water in the bowls because they can't usually see it, uh, especially as, as house cats had evolved, uh, domestic, domestic cats, uh, the senses that are not being used tend to be shut off. So, you know, if, if, if there's a cat with senses... <laughs> It's probably a cat that is partially feral, might be suffering from distemper, we don't know, and you find it running around the forest or something like that, and they can find their prey very easily. But unfortunately, when we domesticate cats and we bring them inside, we take away a lot of their abilities. Uh, so that uh, that's why you should not give a cat a bath. If you must, give them a good brushing. Try to get some of the surface dirt off, but always try to keep their fur dry as much as you can. The skin, there's fleshy parts of the the pads on their on their paws. That's okay. That's okay to get a little bit wet if you want to clean it off. But just make sure you dry the cat. Um, that's really all I have to say about cats. Uh, other than I, I wanted to talk a little bit about something that kind of irritated me. I have a friend on Facebook. He's a great guy. We've collaborated on a couple of things. Uh, posted uh, something about the new Lion King movie. Apparently there's a Lion King live action movie that's going to be on. And um, I look at the cast list and there are only three white people in the cast. And I said that, man. (coughs) It's like a a who's who of of all the famous black people, celebrities. Uh, Beyonce, of course, is in it. Uh, James Earl Jones is in it which is good. That is where you get your credibility. You put Mr. James Earl Jones in the movie. That's great. Beyonce, not so much. Uh, I think Keegan-Michael Key from Key and Peele is in, is in it too. Uh, Eric Andre is in it. I love Eric Andre. Um, <laughs> but, but I did notice there were only three white people in the cast, none of them named Matthew Broderick. Uh, and I, I, I said it, I said, I said in response, everybody was like, Oh, bad. That's so cool. Bad. That's so cool. And me being contrary and pain in the ass, I've got to be the one to piss on everybody's parade. Uh, I don't think I did though. I just said, there's only three white people in this cast. What's going on? You know? And I felt like it was kind of like an affirmative action employment program for, for, for black actors and black musicians and black entertainers and black celebrities. And this guy says, bro, come on. Or come on, bro. You know, he's from Oregon, I think, or something like that. So I forgive him. I forgive him for that. But, you know, I kind of, I, I felt like I was being shamed a little bit. And that's very interesting to me. I was like, eh, hmm, is it possible that I'm racist and I don't know? 
is it am I racist because I call out the fact that there's only like three black three white people in the cat is that racist is it possible am I actually like this you know and I, or I backpedal immediately I was like okay all right yeah I went too far I don't really think I went too far I don't understand you can't just say things anymore uh, you get worried you get worried about how you're 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 represented or, or how you're representing yourself you don't want people to think that I certainly don't want people to think I'm racist. I know that. Um, but I think most white people don't. It's not It's not an issue for the other people uh, involved in the discussion because they are not perceived as being racist. According to MTV, they're being perceived as being prejudiced. According to MTV, from a recent video, it is like next to impossible for a black person to be racist. Yet a white person can be racist. Black people can only be prejudiced. You know, I remember talking to my wife about this and she's like, well, what's the diff? You know, I mean, prejudice, racist, prejudiced, racist. I was trying to consider it for myself, the definition. I figure racism is I hate this person who is this color. Therefore, I'm going to hate everyone who is that color. Because I have put that person in with everybody and I've made everybody that person's problem and vice versa. So I'm going to hate that color. Prejudices. Um, prejudice is a little more irrational, I would say, probably. It's a little more irrational. Um, okay, uh, let me see. What What do I really hate? Um, hmm. It's a very good question. Uh, okay, okay, all right. I got a prejudice example right here. I hate Ryan Gosling. I can't stand him in every movie he's in. I find him insufferable. I don't think he's very talented. I don't even think he's all that handsome or charismatic. Um, the new Blade Runner movie came out. I love Blade Runner. Blade Runner is my favorite movie, one of my favorite movies of all time. Unfortunately, he's the star of that movie. Uh, I'm not going to see Blade Runner because Ryan Gosling is in the movie. It's a par- That's a prejudice. I'm, I'm being prejudiced against the movie because... I don't like Ryan Gosling. This might actually be true. This might actually be true. I might actually be prejudiced because he's in the... Mo- I don't want to see the movie because he's in it. I mean, why am I going to spend two hours and 49 minutes of my life looking up at a big screen of his face? Why do I got to look at his face? And also Jared Leto. I have to deal with that too. I hate Jared Leto. He bugs the crap out of me. And then I hear Harrison Ford's only in it for like, you know, two hours in only for like 40 minutes or something or even less. And it's just like a walk on. Yeah, yeah, I'm in this movie. And then bye. Credits roll. Uh, you know, things like that. That might be considered prejudice because I don't like those actors. Uh, so, I, you know, the thing is, like, you know, looking at the cast list of The Lion King, you know, it's got... I can't stand Beyonce. I, I don't know if I mentioned it in this episode or the previous episode. Uh, yeah, it was the previous episode. About the gender fluid Santa Claus. Um, I don't like Beyonce. I don't think she's talented. I think she's a terrible actress and a terrible singer. Sorry. I just feel that way. It, you don't have to be mad. There's no reason for you to be mad. I just don't like She's not my thing. She's not my thing. It's okay. It's okay for me to not like something that you like. Remember that. So I'm not particularly jazzed. Uh, maybe Regan will want to see it. That's fine. I'll take her to see it, and we'll we'll make sure that Beyonce gets paid. Uh, for now, I'm going to say adieu. It's been a lot of fun. Um, remember, try not to give your cat a bath. Give them a very mild little bath with a washcloth. And also, Lion King, kind of racist in their casting. Yes, I said it. Kind of racist in their casting. Have a good night, and remember... Um, the world is a vampire sent to drain. Secret Destroyer holds you up to the flame. Good night.